while surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. Margo, where do you think we are now? We're still in Galilee, and I believe this is Cana. Hey, look at what that guy is doing! <gasps> oh, 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 look! Here, the fruit of a feathered friend, an egg, Zaloom, Alarum! to be a magician and do tricks like that? Well, all you need to know are the magic words. Yes, the magic words, that's it. Uh, what word they know? Um, oh, alarum, uh, zaloom. No, 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 azalarum, zakarun, alar. Oh, I... Alakazam! Did you see that? It's like a miracle, huh? No, son. That was only a trick. The traveling magician is very good, and he has perfected his tricks well. But a miracle is not a trick. It is a gift from God for the good of man and the glory of God. I am called Benjamin. You appear as travelers from a far place. Yes, we've been on the road for quite a while. And we still have a long way to go. And it will be a miracle if we ever get there. Moki, hush. Uh, I'm Margo, and this is Derek and Moki. Mm. Well, my young friends, you are traveling in the land of miracles and among a people whom God has guided through our history, his obedient followers and prophets who listened to and obeyed God who blessed them with miracles. Noah, who talked with God, was instructed to build the ark so that he and his family would be saved from the great flood. It rained for 40 days and nights. As the water receded, the ark came to rest on top of a mountain. God set a rainbow in the sky as a sign that he would never again send a flood to destroy mankind. And Moses, leading our people out of Egypt and with God guiding the way, was told to raise his rod over the Red Sea and divide it. Moses obeyed, and a strong wind swept a wide path through the waters and dried the ground, and his people crossed over into freedom. The walls of Jericho barred the way of the Israelites. Joshua, their new leader, following God's battle plan, marched his army around the walls for seven days. Then, with a great shout, he brought down the walls and led the people into the Promised Land. The giant Goliath, with the army of the Philistines, faced the Israelites and the boy David, who obeyed God, and with but a sling and a stone, slew the giant. And again, Israel was saved. 
Daniel the prophet was thrown into the den of lions for refusing to obey the king's law that forbade anyone to pray to God. But through his faith and prayers, the lions became gentle as house cats, and Daniel was saved from the hungry beasts. And then one day, as foretold by the prophets, came Jesus, who in but three short years performed many miracles and fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies, proving that he was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. Some of those prophets of long ago seem like old friends. Gee, Derek, it wasn't so long ago. It was just a couple of weeks ago that um, we saw Moses. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Jesus and wishing we could have seen some of his miracles. Well, my young friends, you are looking at living proof of one of his miracles. Oh, what, what do you mean? I was born in the town of Nain, a few miles south of here. I lived with my widowed mother, her only child, when as a young man, I became very ill and I died. <gasps> My body was prepared for burial. My grieving mother and friends followed. When the procession neared the gates of the city, Jesus approached with his disciples. <gasps> Dear woman, do not weep. I say to you, young man, get up. What? Where am I? <gasps> My son! Mother. <laughs> yes, Moki, it's true. And you can do the trick like the magician? I've got the magic words. Each year, I close my shop for a few days and walk the roads where Jesus walked and remember his marvelous works. Say, would you like to come with me? And I will show you where he performed some of his great miracles. I'd love that. Sure, sounds great. Come on, Moki, we're moving out. No, no, wait, wait. I'm going to do the egg and dove trick. I remember the magic words. A la balloon, macaroon. Ugh. Uh, I think I said the wrong magic words. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's move out. I have prepared some provisions for the journey. Here, let me carry that for you. You see that house up ahead? It was here in Cana that Jesus' first miracle took place. A wedding was in progress. According to the law of Moses and of Israel, may the Lord bless your union. Amen. Jesus' mother Mary was helping with the wedding. She had concern about the refreshments. Son, the feast is not over, and there is no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. Do whatever he tells you. Fill the water pots with water. Pour some out and give it to the man in charge of the feast. At other weddings, the best wine is served first, but you have kept the best to last. I bet Jesus got invited to a lot of weddings. That was such a nice thing for him to do. There were two purposes for this miracle, Margot. First, he honored his mother's request. And second, more importantly, he increased his disciples' faith with his power. Hmm. I still think I can do the disappearing egg and bird trick. Let me see. Uh, 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 
Barum, uh, Filigaroon. No, 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 no. Oh, it's June Moon Pantaloon. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay, okay, I put it back already. I would have given you the bird. <laughs> This is Lake Genesaret. Let us rest for a bit. Here is some bread, fruit, and some hard-boiled eggs. I'm sure we could all eat. And there is a well for water to drink. Oh, looks good. Oh, thank you. But, but do you have enough? There is plenty. And we can resupply as we go along. I'll ask those fishermen who just came in what the catch of the day is. Maybe they can spare a few fish. <laughs> Looks like Moki struck out. Oh, they haven't caught anything all day. It was right here, under the same situation, that Jesus met Peter, his brother Andrew, James, and his brother John. Jesus was preaching to the crowd by the lake. The people were crowding in. As the boat stopped at the shore, Jesus stepped into the boat. Move out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Master, we have fished all night and caught nothing. But if you say so, we will try again. Peter, do not be afraid. Follow me, and from now on, you will be fishers of men. And Peter, Andrew, James, and John became his disciples. Yes. They left all they had to follow Jesus. They left all those fish? <laughs> That's right, Moki. I guess only they knew it was a miracle. And the people on the shore figured it was just fishermen's luck. Hey, guys, watch! I've got the magic word now, I know it! <clears throat> Through the lips and past the gums, look out, Tommy, here it comes! <clears throat> there, I guess I can make an egg disappear. We are coming into Capernaum. See up ahead, the Roman garrison? Jesus performed a wonderful miracle there. Word of his great works and miracles had traveled throughout the land. And as he entered the city, the Roman centurion, a man who commanded 100 soldiers, came to Jesus. Excuse me, Rabbi. With respect, I ask a favor. My servant, whom I love as a son, is ill and near death. If you will only just speak the word, my servant will be made well. Take me to him. Master, I am not worthy to have you enter my house. I have authority over 100 soldiers, and if I say to one, do this, I know he will obey. And if I say to another, go there, I know he will go. I do not have to see. I know it is enough that you say the word, and it will be done. I have not seen faith this great in all of Israel. Go home. Your faith has cured your servant. Sir, your servant is well. The fever is gone. He's healed. But the Romans are the bad guys. Ooh. Why would he help the Romans? They treated the people so bad. Yes, and later they crucified him. Even though he helped the Jews and the Gentiles alike. That's true, Margot. And now, many of those Gentiles have become true followers of Jesus. 
great crowds followed him wherever he went so they could hear his teachings and be healed. Jesus was tired and needed rest. And as the crowd started to leave, My friends, let us cross over to the other side of the lake that we might rest for a time. afraid, Andrew. Don't you have any faith? Peace. Be still. What kind of man is he that even the wind and sea obey him? Boy, Jesus sure didn't have much time to rest, did he? He had a lot to do in a short time. And as he said, he was doing his father's business. This is Bethsaida, a Gentile city. pretty sights here. Mm, now there's a couple of pretty sights. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. <coughs> what, what, what? Hey, I can't see. Monkey, get your foot off my face. Uh, uh we tripped. You and your pretty sights. There was a man living in this city who could not see such pretty sights. He was blind. He had heard that Jesus was in the city and asked friends to take him to Jesus. Sir, our friend who is blind asked that we bring him to you, that you might restore his sight. Come with me. Can you see? I see men that look like trees walking. Now I can see, Master. Go home. Do not tell any of the townspeople what I have done for you. Why didn't Jesus want the man to tell anyone what he had done for him? Jesus knew the time of his ministry was getting short, and he needed time to be alone with his disciples to train them. So they could carry on his work after he'd gone. It would be pretty hard to keep a miracle like that a secret. That's true, Derek. He had attracted much attention in his travels, performing many miracles, and great crowds followed him. Jesus and his disciples left to find solitude in a wilderness area. But a large multitude, over 5,000, followed and found him. I shall ask them to leave. No, they are like sheep in need of a shepherd. As the hours lengthened toward evening, his disciples became concerned about the time. Master, we must send the people away so they can buy food in the villages as they go home. We must feed them before sending them away. Philip, where will we find bread that all these people may eat? If we could buy 200 denarii worth of bread, we would still not have enough for each one to have a piece. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. The master can have my food. <laughs> Lord, this young lad offers his food to you. 
What food has he brought? Only five small barley loaves and two fishes. Thank you, my son. Bring some baskets to me. Now, my brothers, feed our friends. so excited at this miracle, they wanted Jesus to become their king. How wonderful it would be to have a king who would feed them through his miracles. Hey, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I figured you would like that, Moki. But remember, he said his kingdom is not of this world, but is the kingdom of heaven. After sending the multitude to their homes, Jesus desired to go alone up into the mountain. While I go to the mountain to pray, row across to the other side, and I will come and meet you there later. Jesus stayed alone, praying for some hours. As he came down from the mountain to the shore, he saw the wind had made the boat unmanageable. And his disciples had been rowing for hours and making no progress. He decided to go to their aid. Be afraid. It is I. Lord, if it is you, let me come to you on the water. Come, Peter. little faith. Why did you doubt? Surely you are the Son of God. The Sea of Galilee is so calm and beautiful. I can just picture Jesus walking there on it. There is nothing that Jesus couldn't do. Uh, Peter almost did it. Until he let doubt weaken his faith. That is right, Derek. There will always be those whose doubt destroys faith and keeps them from receiving great blessings that God wants to give his children. Well, my young friends, if we want to follow Jesus' footsteps, we best get moving. We have yet a long way to go. In more ways than one. You know, I was just thinking, what we're doing is what Jesus asked people to do, following his footsteps. So many wonderful miracles. Healing the sick, raising the dead, giving sight to the blind. And feeding all those thousands of hungry people with bread and fishes. His miracles were signs that he is the Christ, the Son of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And he is still feeding the multitudes of the world with his words and teachings. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they who show mercy to others, for mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are they who have pure hearts, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who make peace among men, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. 